Okay, we're learning the Maimir Vata Tetzave of the Rebbe. Um, we're starting Eiz Dalit. In the books, it's on page Kuf Lamed, but there's a million different pages. Okay, now the Rebbe, the Rebbe is explaining a bunch of questions on the Pasuk Vata Tetzave. Why is this different than all of the commandments when it says Savas B'nei Yisrael? And also, why do they have to bring the, the oil to Meshe Rabbeinu? If Aaron was the one that kindled the Meneira, and why does it say Kosis Lamor? It should say Kosis Lahoyid. Okay, because it's not the source of light. So he starts explaining that Meshe Rabbeinu's role is to bat to Tzavas B'nei Yisrael. Meshe Rabbeinu's function is to bind the Yidin with Hashem. And through this, the Meshe Rabbeinu bind the Yidin to Hashem because the, Yidna, the Yidna are the feet of Meshe Rabbeinu. He is the head, and they're the feet. So therefore, Meshe Rabbeinu becomes elevated through the feet. So he says, to explain this, we need to understand the concept of Raya Mehemna, which doesn't only mean a faithful shepherd, it means a shepherd of faith. The Meshe Rabbeinu, the Meshe Rabbeinu in every generation internalizes the Amunah that every Jew has, what's, and what's needed for that particular generation. So he says, and through this though, through the level of Kosis, through Mesivis Nefesh, and, and the, so then you become to the level not only of Ord, but you actually reveal the essence of the Jew, which is Ma'od. So he says now in Dalit, This explanation of the Pasuk Ba'ata Tetzava, Ba'ba HaMaymer, and the Friedrich Rebbe's Maymer comes in the continuation. To what he explains in the beginning of that Maymer, of the Friedrich Rebbe, prepared as the Kibbal Ayud, the but the Pasuk says in the Megillah, the Yidin accepted what they began, meaning what they began in Matan Teda. So the Magmara says, the, the Pasuk means that Matan Teda was the beginning and the final acceptance willingly of Teda was in the days of Purim. Correct. By Meshe Rabbeinu, there's no self. There's no me by Meshe Rabbeinu. But the bottom line is that when Meshe Rabbeinu connects the Eden to Hashem, that is his function. So then he, he's functioning as, as his function. He's completing his function. So he's fulfilling his mission. Everybody has their mission to do. Trust me, his mission is the hardest. Yes. So he says like this. At Matan it was only the beginning of the acceptance of mitzvahs. And the time of Gzeir of Homan, was the acceptance willingly the Kibbala Yehudim. And the Pasik, and I'm sorry, the Gemara in Shabbos, and the Pasik came of the Kibbala Yehudim, Kimu Mashi Kibbala Kvar. They started keeping willingly because if the Gemara in the Sugi Matan Teda says when Hashem held the mountain over the head and he said do or die, you know, either. So the Gemara said, Rabbi So if that's the case, the person has a good excuse. We're coerced, we're forced. I never accepted it willingly. So the Gemara says, Kiblu In the days of Achashvedesh, the Jews willingly accepted Teda. So therefore, the rabbis explain, the Gemara says that at the beginning, Matan Teda was only the beginning. When did they eat and willingly, so to speak, on their own accept Teda? was in the days of Matan. He said, This, that the Jews said, by Matan Teda was only the acceptance. But by Meach HaShvedesh, Kimu Mashikiblu. So the rabbis explain like this. By Matan Teda, it was Nasa Venishma. But by Purim, they started keeping what they accepted of Matan Teda. And the three the Rebbe writes in the Maimur. It's a wondrous thing. In other words, that's time a difficult thing. Pella means that it's wondrous, it's completely un not understood. You ask the question like this. By Matan Teda, the Yidin were on the highest possible level. They came out of Egypt, there were newborn babies, they prepared themselves 49 days. They were Mamish Tachr Sekedusha. At the time of Purim, they willingly accepted. Yeah. Where did the Israel Nefesh come from? 
the Mitzidah's nefesh was what they caused them to willingly accept it. No, that's what he's saying. But Lachayda, by Matan Tayda, they're saying like this. Matan Tayda is only the beginning. It was not the main thing. <coughs> Purim is the main thing. <coughs> but the question is, it doesn't make sense because by Matan Tayda, the Eden went up to ultimate high level. By Purim, they're on the ultimate low level. So how can you say Purim is a higher level than Matan Tayda? So he says, the Matan Tayda, you saw Betach and Soili. <clears throat> they were on the highest of level of your ex, from Gili Elokus Bedarga Chinayis. They had the highest revelation of Elokus. Anoichi Hashem Elokacha, the greatest revelation that ever happened in the world. The Neis of Lezer Shigamba Matan Teira. In addition to the fact that even before Matan Teira, Hoye Giluim Nailim Beyes, there were great revelations. They had Kriyas Yamsuf. So even before, they, by Kriyas Yamsuf, the Eden said, Even the maidservant, by Kriyas Yamsuf, so more than Yechezkel ben Buzi saw in the, in the throne of Hashem, the Mekod we read on the Avtei, the first day of Shavuos. So they had tremendously great revelation. I mean, like the Rebbe Rishab said, it was Gili Atman saying, Sof and Mitzrayim. Then they had a greater revelation that Yam became Yabosh. All the hidden levels of Elokos became revealed. Then they had Matan Teira. Because again, the greatest revelation of godliness in the world that ever existed was by Matan Teira. <clears throat> what? They saw the future. I don't know if they saw it. Maybe should have been did. <clears throat> no, they just saw the highest level. I don't know if they saw the future. Yet in the days of Achashvedish, they were on the lowest level. In addition to the concealment that exists in every Golos, the Jews were still in Golos. One of the reasons the Gemara says we don't say Halal on Purim, <coughs> because and even after the story of Purim, they were still enslaved to Achashvedish. The whole Golos of Dugma is Golos Mitzrayim. Because every Golos is similar to the Golos of Mitzrayim. By Kamesh, the Golos Mitzrayim. Just by Golos Mitzrayim, it says, that the Yid didn't listen to Mesh Rabbeinu from being oppressed. Every Golos, that's the definition of Golos, that it that we are not in control, so it's very difficult for a Jew to keep Torah mitzvahs in Golis. So not only in the additional fact that every Golis is concealment of godliness, but is even a greater concealment, because it was the only time in history where there was a gzeda against every single Jewish man, woman, and child to kill them. The only time there was a realistic gzeda of against the, everybody, in the, uh, every single Jew, no matter where they were in the 127 countries, they were going to get killed. So L'chayda, Matan Teira was the highest level of where the Yidin were. Purim were the lowest. Yet, Afa became the previous Rebbe asks, Bizma Matan Teira by Matan Teira. Chaho Yisro Betacha Soili. When the Jews were on the highest level, Haisir Akas Cholam was only a beginning. Echelu Lasses. When they're in the lowest, lowest of levels, in other words, the combination, the finalization of Matan Teiru was put in. So how could that be? Matan Teiru on a lofty level, Purim there on a very low level, and yet the ultimate is Dafki in the low level. But there must always be a cutting to be a mob. <clears throat> That's what the whole Mimer is explaining. But he's explaining the Frit that the Friedrich Rebbe asks in the Mimer, yeah, how is it possible the mountain tater when they're in the highest level there was just the beginning? And ultimately in the lowest level. So I mean we learned this Mimer many times. And what's the Rebbe explaining? That only when things are tough, then you reach a level that you couldn't have reached otherwise. A filter, a filter purifies the water 
only because there's a blockage in the filter. If there's no blockage, the water just flows by easily, there's nothing blocking it, then you don't have purified water. There has to be a blockage. If you want to create electricity, you need a dam in the water to stop by the water. And then when the water breaks through, it's powerful. If you don't come to the rescue of the filter, the filter will be blocked and no good anymore. If you don't do what? Rescue the filter. And that is the role of a Meshrabeinu. Yeah, the role of Meish Rabbeinu is to get the Jews to have this level of Mesidus Nefesh. And like we learned yesterday, in every generation accordingly. In Mordechai is one way, in the Torah, when this, the Fleeting Rebbe Maimus Tavrish Pesach was a different way, and the Rebbe is a different way. Every generation has its things. Without Moshe, it won't happen. Without Moshe, it cannot happen. Cannot. Cannot happen. They don't, which scholars? That they need, well, because they don't learn to sit this. What do you want them to know? <clears throat> yep. Yeah. But they still get through the Moshe Rabbeinu. They get to the Hashemot through Moshe Rabbeinu over the shoulders. The, the Rebbe explains, our Rebbe explains, when the Rebbe says in Perak Beis of Tanya, that the people that rebel against scholars, that they get it from the Chitanias. He says you could be a big scholar. But if you're not, you're still not Dovok, you're not connected to the tzaddik. You rebel against the tzaddik. So you get the hashpah anyway. doesn't mean Pasha Merid B'tamidah sinners. He says, no. That's not what the Rebbe says. Pasha Merid B'tamidah Chacham. It doesn't say you're rebelling against Hashem. If you're not connected to the Mesh Rabbeinu, then you become a Kairach. See, people have a misunderstanding. People think Kairach was this terrible guy. Kerach was a very lofty, great tzaddik. Shmuel Anavi came out from Kerach, and Kerach saw that. That's why he started out, because he saw Shmuel Anavi, who was equal to Mesh and Aaron together. What do you think Kerach was, this wild, wicked Russia? Kerach was Pikech, how you says he was a smart guy. He was the head of the Levim. He was the head of the Levim. But he didn't see that. He didn't have the connection to Meish Rabbein. That was his problem. Which is Even the Chet Ego. If you look at the, in the parish in Kisisa, when the Jews worshipped the Ego, it didn't start off with worshipping idols. What did they say to Aaron? Kizam Meish Ish Asher Halonu Meret Misraim Lo Yadani Mahoyalei. This Meish Rabbeinu guy, you know, we don't know what happened to him. So what did they want to make in the ego? Another Moshe Rabbeinu. That's what they take the simple meaning of the Pasek. They didn't say, hey, where is God? They said, we don't know what happened. This Moshe Rabbeinu didn't come down from the mountain. So we need him a new Moshe Rabbeinu. So they made an ego. What was this sin? What caused the ego? Not realizing Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't leave his flock. Moshe Rabbeinu comes back. The whole sin of the eagle started not because they wanted to worship idols. Because they fought Meshe Rabbeinu. We need another Meshe Rabbeinu. We need our own Meshe Rabbeinu. Not Meshe Rabbeinu Hashem gives us. We need one of our own. We, we make a Meshe, you know, we... Uh, so that's the indication that our Meshe Rabbeinu, our generation is still alive. His Ashpah is still alive. Not physically. But he's still Emir Meshamish. The Gemara says, Ma'ala Halan Emir Meshamish Avkan. The question is, in Chesidus it says, he needed Melubish in a go. But that's the same. It's easier to have one person have a short big mom's talk over the whole world. But that time in the Bach chapter, or two generations, how could someone that doesn't even know about the existence? They do know. Oh no, they don't know. I'm saying, but the tzaddik knows. You have a good Jew at the end of the, at the other side of the world that doesn't even know the existence of Nasiyadur, and he still has a very good connection to Hashem. Yeah, because it comes through the Nasiyadur. He doesn't even have to know the Nasiyadur. How is a person? One second. 
the, the, somebody has to flee the Gerebbe, um, you don't know me, so how can I become connected to you? So he said, when you learn my Torah and you do what I'm asking people to do, so they do it. So a lot of these Jews are doing it even though they don't know, but they're still doing it anyway because that's coming from the, the Meshe Rabbeinu. And that's the, that lady. She said, what is a Rebbe, that when a Jew sighs at the other end of the world, the Rebbe hears it, the Rebbe feels it. And the reality is, why did that Jew sigh at the other end of the world? Because the Rebbe thought about them. Even though they never met each other. Correct. The head knows the whole, uh, the nerve system of the whole body is in the head. Except that head doesn't know anything. And this head knows everything. When the Rebbe said that story, this is the way they tell the story, that there's a guy, there's Mamish involved with the army in Israel, he knew exactly how many soldiers, and he was by the Rebbe, and the Rebbe told him X amount of soldiers were dead. And he said, Rebbe, no, you're off by one. And the Rebbe said, and then he came back, he walked out of the Rebbe, he found another soldier died. So the Rebbe was right, not him. And later, a year later, he came back to the Rebbe. It's a long story. He came back to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said, how, how do you know that? I'm, I'm, I'm the guy. I mean, how did you know that? The Rebbe said, this is what they say the Rebbe said, that every neshama that comes into this world and leaves this world goes through this office. That's what they say the Rebbe told them. I didn't hear it from the Rebbe, but this is what the guy says he told, the Rebbe told them. Every neshama that comes into this world and out of this world goes through this office. That's Meshe Rabbeinu. And therefore he's saying, what is the role of a Meshe Rabbeinu in every generation to, is to do it? Okay. So he says, in the Bible, as I explained, in the time of the Gzeda of Haman, So in other words, what was the advantage of Purim over Matan Torah? One thing, Mesidus Nefesh. The Nais of Lahem Shalayam Mesidus Nefesh. In addition to the fact that they had Mesidus Nefesh, Shalay Lich Berchas Sholim. Not to deny, God forbid, Hashem, Kamavur, but Tayra, Dalt Rebbe explains in Tayra Ord. Shabim, or you may meet him, Dasan, and even in time of, it's a big Kiddish of Dalt Rebbe, because the world says, I mean, it's for him's sake, that Purim was exiled on the body of the Jew. No matter how you religious or not, Hanukkah was exiled against the neshama of Yid, right? Yet the Alter Rebbe says here in Tehor that if the Eden would have given up Yiddishkeit, nothing would have been done to them, even in Bayhamen. Why? What was exiled on Yehudim? What does Yehudim mean? Made the kaf of Avedes are made b'chol Tehor Kula. Alpha PK, nevertheless, they also died to Machshavis Chutz Chasen Shom and never entered their mind a foreign thought to, to, to go against Hashem. Now, who did that? We say this in Mesiris Nefesh Shalahem. I say they Mordechai Yehudi Meishu Shibedayre. If you quoted yesterday from the Gemara, that Mordechai in his generation is like Meishu in his. So, who gave the Yidden that Koyach in Mesiris Nefesh? Not only for sure not to, to God forbid, go worship idols. It never, it says, the Medrash says, They didn't even have a foreign thought for a whole year. Because Xeda was an other, and then, you know, the Xeda was for next other. So the Gemara says, Call Ashana Kula. The whole year they stood with Mesidus Nefesh. And what that means, Sidus explains, what do you mean a whole year they stood with Mesidus Nefesh? Because in the year you have four seasons. The summer, winter, fall, and spring. Each month at each time as a different Aveda. So you can have, like the Rebbe explains later in the Miami, they were eating in, in Russia, they have Mesiris Nefesh. Out of Russia, they didn't so much. Yeah, what does it mean, Amdu Kol Hashana? Kol Hashana, the Medrash Emphasis explains that to every possible situation, whether it's winter Aveda, summer Aveda, spring Aveda, what, they had constant Mesiris Nefesh. Ultimate level Mesidus Nefesh. Who instilled that Mesidus Nefesh within them? A guy by the name of Mordechai. 
Okay, my Mevata Tetzave, we're on the last few lines before Isaiah. Okay, so that, the, Rebbe, the last thing we're learning is like this. The Rebbe explains that... No, 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 no. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, not be, we're not way, we're way before that. Um, one day, I know, but we're in Oiz Dalit. No, we're in the middle of Oiz Dalit, but we're not, we're still in the middle of a paragraph. Um, we did Dalit too. No, we didn't finish Dalit. We're in the middle, we're in the middle of Dalit. Okay, um, here in the Sefer, it's Kuflam and Aleph. Okay, anyway, so that, the Rebbe is explaining this follow. Where are going to start? The Chayra? Okay. So, so the Rebbe explains like this, that um, to understand how to cause this Lamar and bringing the, the oil to Meshur Bain, and Meshur Bain becomes great. So he starts explaining this Raya Mehem. Okay? Raya Mehem means... The, the real interpretation is he feeds a Muna. Every Jew has a Muna, the Meshach Rabbeinu feeds it. Whatever, whatever the generation needs, that's what he gives. And therefore, through that level, Mesir Asnafesh, of course, he come not only to Ar, he come to Mar. Okay, so he says, Lechera, so the Friedrich Rebbe explains in the Maimon, that's why the ultimate revelation of Matan of, of Mat Teir was on Purim. And he asked Lechera, by Matan Teir, that you were on a lofty level, by put him there on a very low level. Nevertheless, he explains it's what's middle of now. So he says that was Mesidus Nefesh. Because if they gave in to Haman, they wouldn't have gotten killed. So therefore, what was did it is the level of Mesidus Nefesh. And they did it for one year. A whole year, which means to any type of Mesidus Nefesh, they had that Mesidus. So it's real Mesidus Nefesh. Okay, so it's like six, five lines in the end of this paragraph. Say this, I'm Mesidus Nefesh, Shulahem. Who awakened this level of Mesidus Nefesh? Which, by the way, the Rebbe is indirectly connecting to the level of Amuna. Because when you internalize the Amuna, so then you're going to be Mesidus Nefesh. He says, And that's what it says, The Kibbalah, you the Mesidus Shechelu Lassis. The Matan Teira, he said, Akas Chol. By Matan Teira, even though the Yidim were on a very lofty level, it was only the beginning. But Bismang Zeta Summon, Haisa Kabbalah, that was the actual acceptance. Kaidesha, Yolahem Oz, Mesidus Nefesh, Bepoil. Not only did they have the Koyach, the potential Mesidus Nefesh, they had actual Mesidus Nefesh, Nisala Be'inyin Zeb. And the Rebbe explains in this aspect, because not in every aspect. Generally speaking, Matan Teda, the Yidin, went a much higher level than they were in Purim. But in this aspect, of revealing the causes, the level of Mesidus Nefesh, Madrega Nailis Yaitzit, to a much greater level, than they were at the time of Matan Teira. Therefore, Dafka by Purim was Kabbalah Vikibala Yehud. Okay? So now the Rebbe says, Lucheri Yeshleimad. So Lucheri, we could say about all this. Shapirish, because Islamard, the explanation of Kos Islamard is. Shaydei causes that through the level of being oppressed, nishper v'nitke broken and oppressed, magim lamor. It comes out from the Maimer that how do you get to revealing the mor, the source, is only through causes. Who be l'chayr? So this is an explanation. Why only through the time of the gzeda? Did they come to Mesiris Nefesh? But Eifinayli said, "Why only put him? Did they come to this greater level? Ki Mesiris Nefesh imel mitzad etzem aneshama. Because where does Mesiris Nefesh come from? The Rebbe explains in many places. There's no logic for Mesiris Nefesh. There's no reason for Mesiris. It doesn't make sense. Because the Torah says v'chay bohem. You're supposed to live. Now we're talking about a level of gift. So where does it come from? It doesn't come from." The intellect of the neshama or the midas of the neshama. It comes from sha'etzim and neshama shilamaylam begilui. Ma'or and shemimen and himsar comes from the level of ma'or. Then it's 210 years in Islam was not talking? No. First of all, it's only the last 90 years. Okay, but it wasn't the same. It was all before Matan Teda, don't forget. So why 
One year at the time of Akashkarosh was higher than 210 years. Sure. It was even higher than Matan Torah. It was Persians. That's, that's why it was Persians. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly the reason. But if you notice, it doesn't say Mordechai the Persian, it's a Mordechai a Yehudi. He was American. So, right? What? Just to understand what you were saying. You were saying for 210 years you were doing this in but that wasn't. They didn't have Messiah's Nafesh in the time. The only one that had Messiah's Nafesh was Levi. Levi. Right. They had the coffee. They were under. But they didn't have Messiah. They didn't bring up Messiah's Nafesh to them. Is it because they were not commanded to win the individual? So it's. When did Meshe Rabbeinu function as the Meshe Rabbeinu in Mitzrayim? How many years before you'd see us in Mitzrayim? A year before. Oh. Yeah, a year. The Makkas took a year. Hmm? What? The Makkas took a year, it says. You're saying here that Khatit is not a great tool Yeah. Is when you, somebody's under persecution or under One second. A, a guy's homeless, God forbid, yeah? yeah. He's cautist. Yeah. It brings him a serious snapfish. No. What was it? It's not a serious snapfish, there is cautist. It's broken. Cautist brings a level of serious snapfish if the cautist is used to reveal more. No. Uh, a guy's impressed because he doesn't the coffee machine's not working. He comes to Mord. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. <laughs> By day shall you have the mass of the causes. And then through this that they're in the actual level of causes. Nizgala etam and shamamort lucheda, the way it simply means, if you to analyze the thing, through causes you come to Mord. But Lucheda, he says, Avol. But that's the way it sounds it should be. But in the mind it doesn't say that, the Rebbe writes. It comes out, Shapirish Kos Islam comes after the union of Raya Mehemda. First, the Rebbe and the Friedrich Rebbe and the Maimah explains Raya Mehemda, that he feeds the moon. Then he comes to the level of Kos Mashma, the union Kos Islam it comes out like this, the, what's the union of Kos Not so much that they're oppressed, Rather, that what causes causes not the fact that they're in Golos from the Friedrich Rebbe's Maimer comes out that what causes causes the fact that Meshe Rabbeinu feeds the Muna. So it's a different thing than what we're saying here. Okay, so he says in here like this, we can explain based on it's what's known this that the Eden by nature, the Gemara says, I'm Mamin and Bene Maminim. Like we said many times, when this guy came to the Rebbe and said, I don't believe, the Rebbe said, the fact that you say you don't believe doesn't take away from the fact that you do believe. Because the Gemara says that you believe. So you're not saying the truth. You're not saying that you believe. He says this that they eat Mamin and Ba'elukus Bamunipshuta. This that the Eden believe in Hashem. The ain't and they don't need any proof. The Gemara says, by nature, you're born a Jew, you're Mamin and Bnei Mamin. This comes mitzat Shnei time. Two reasons. Why is a Yid by nature a believer? He says, two things are explaining it. Number one, because like the Gemara says, the expression, their Mazel sees it. Meaning, the level of the neshama that's not in the body. Because the body, the level of the body is, is concealed and all messed up. But the neshama, the mazal of the neshama, which is the level of the neshama, not in the body. The neshama shalamayla raya lukus. Because the neshama, not in the body. But it doesn't mean 10 miles up. It means the level, the spiritual level of the neshama that's not in the physical body, which is, by the way, chaya nechido, nefesh ruch neshama, you know, it's very important to understand this before we go further. Nefesh, Ruch, and Neshama are the three levels of the Neshama that are in the body, that affect the body directly. Nefesh represents action, Ruach represents Midas, Neshama represents Seichel. Okay? Those three are the Keiches Pnimium 
of the nefesh. The way the nefesh is connected to the body through these three nefesh, ruach, and neshama. Then there's two levels of neshama, chaya yechida. Chaya is the, the makif level of ratzim, which is, by the way, mazlayo chazi. It's a level higher than the part of the neshama that's in the body. It's the level of mazlayo chazi. Okay, that is an encompassing level, meaning it doesn't affect the neshama directly, it affects it indirectly. That level of the neshama sees elokuz, and therefore indirectly it affects the body, that the neshama that's in the body to, to have a moon in elokuz. Then you have the level of yechida, that's the essence of the neshama. That's even much greater than chayim. So he says, the first reason why the neshama of Yid believes in Hashem, why does he believe in Hashem? Because they have this neshama, and they have the level of Mazlai or Chazim, which again is the level of Chaya. By the way, that's where we learned. Uh, corresponding with these five levels of the neshama, you have, uh, during the week, we have three tefillahs. Shachos, Mincha, Mayrev. Shabbos, Yom Tev, Rish we have four tefillahs. And Yom Kippur, Achaz, Bashana, we have the level of five tefillahs. So it corresponds, because during the week, What's revealed in the body, Nefesh, Ruch, and Neshama. So we have three tefillahs, Shabbos, Milch, and Mayrev. Shabbos, Yom Tev is a holier day, meaning there's a greater Gilui of Elokus of the Neshama. So we have fourth level of, of Davani, Musaf. Yom Kippur, Achaz, Bashana, that's when the Yechidah, Shabbat, Nefesh, the essence of the Jew is revealed. So therefore we have five tefillahs. Therefore, Ne'ilah, which is the fifth tefillah, is the time when the essence of the Jew is revealed within the Jew. No, they also were part of the, the others. I mean, we're connected to the others. What does that have to do with this? No, I'm saying the level of the connection that we have. It has nothing to do with what he's saying about Amuna. Amuna is not because we're connected to the others. Yeah. And you besides the fact that the Rebbe is going to say it soon, besides the fact that it says all over it, it's not the Yatsim and Nisham. The mazel of the Nisham is not the essence. The Rebbe is going to explain the, the second level. No. Is there a reason for a year? Does that mean that four season has to pass for the process? The Rebbe explains later in the Maimur. MS is real under all situations, under all occasions, right? If a Jew has, and this is what the Rebbe explains later, if a Jew had Mercedes Nafish in Russia, but when he came to America, you don't see that same level of Mercedes Nafish. It means, in a reality situation, it's not real Mesidus Nefesh. Because if you have real Mesidus Nefesh, it's eternal. It's Nitzchi. It's Emes. It's eternal. If you sometimes you're like this, and sometimes you're like this, it's not Emes. Dr. Rebentan, when he speaks about the Benini, says the Benini, when he davens, then puts the Nefesh Abamas to sleep. So why isn't it real? It's only Sfas Emes. He said, because in reality, if the fact that the Nefesh Abamis wakes up after davening shows that it's not real. The Chesidus gives the marshal of the halacha, not as some chazman achaz b'shavor, which means rivers that dry up, natural springs that dry up once in seven years, are not called mayim chayim. They can't use it in the base of Mikdash. I, for six years, it's functioning. It's mayim chayim for six years. The fact that in the seventh year it's not Mayim Chaim shows that even when it's six years, it's not real. One second, one second. So therefore it's not real. So a real avoider is no matter where you are, how you are, when it is, what it is, it's the same avoider. It doesn't change. That's emes. Now, when you have like we said yesterday, there's a veda of winter, there's a veda of summer, there's a veda of spring, there's a veda of fall. Just like generally speaking, you have Nisan and you have Tishrei. One's the veda of Lamato, you know, Nisan is revelations from above Nas. Tishrei is a veda of Tshuva Momato Lamato. In the middle, you have Tevis and, 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 and Tamos of Kredos with Gufnanim. There's four different Avedas. Now, if a Jew is. is more in tuned to Tishrei than he is for Nisan, or Nisan more than Tishrei, that means it's not real. Because if it would be real, if it would be real, there wouldn't be any difference. Same 
No. If it affects people, yeah, it's supposed to be. When a person is in an environment that I've explained in the earlier years, Sikhis, one of two things have to happen. Either you affect them or they affect you. If you are in an environment and nothing happens, not you to them and not them to you, yeah, then you're not in the community. You might be physically there, but you're not there. You're not involved. Why do you send the kids to Yeshiva? You send them to... To learn Torah. To learn Torah. So that's going to help the level of Amunah. What is... A kid who's in Yeshiva... I understand. What are you saying, though? I'm saying the environment affects the level of Amunah. I'm saying somebody who is under cutting. Somebody who is in Russia. No. No. His level of emuna, because he is in that environment, is higher than somebody who is in complacency. It depends what, again, if the homeless guy is cussing because the coffee machine is not working, it's not cussing, it's cussing, but it's not no more. When you drink the coffee, you become no more. But he says it's broken. Rabbi, when you said about that, if it's not consistent, it's not not that it doesn't count. It's not MS. It's not Svas MS Tikan Light. It's not MS Lamite. That's what I'm going to say. Perky Bays and Tanya, no? Let me answer his question first. Yeah, question. This was a question asked to the Rebbe many times, many years ago, and the Rebbe came out with Mifta Tefillin. said, okay, today they didn't put on Tefillin, but yesterday they didn't, tomorrow they didn't, so it's not, uh, what's the uftu of it? The answer is, the Rebbe says in Perek Hofei and Tanya, that Yechot Zelem, Maile Nitzchot Elem Vod. When a Jew does one mitzvah, that connection with Hashem is per- permanent, eternal. That one mitzvah. But if we're talking about Aved of a Jew, does he have this Av of a Jew? Or, I'll give you another example, more practical example. A Jew in a religious environment is more, uh, is doing, practicing more than if he goes out to a distant island by himself. Yeah? The true test the true test of Yiddishkeit is not when you're in a, in a ghetto area. It's when you're Dafka not in the ghetto area. Yeah? That's why when the Rebbeim send on Shlichas, yeah, they're giving that Koyach HaMashaleach, that even when a person is in an environment which is not conducive to Yiddishkeit, they have the ability to affect others not affecting them. You can have a chesidish boy, a chesidish yeah? And then when they get married, they're not so <coughs> yes? yes? In reality, I told you we were bachar in yeshiva, one of us was making fun of one of the guys in the yeshiva. So he said, so I remember, this is 50 years ago he said this. He said to the, to the guy, let me tell you something. The proof of a chesidish bachar is when he becomes a younger man. You want to know huh, when he becomes when he gets married. You want to know if a guy was a chesidish shabbach or not? It's when he gets married or not. Because he's chesidish shabbach. What is it? In Yeshiv, what else is there? Like, but that doesn't mean when you come to Jew and put on tefillin, that action is real. That action is permanent. It's permanent. That one action is a yichud nitchila elam what. Action, Every action is Nitzchi. If you're talking about is a person's avoid real or not, it depends. If it's constant, it's real. If it's not constant, it's not real. Do you have a momentary element? 
Yeah, that's what Alter Rebbe says in Tanya. Alpha Pikain, I said, I'm calling them Svas Emes Tikan Lad. He says, Alter Rebbe says a different thing, because potentially they could reawaken that level anytime. So by a yid, it's emes, because technically he could reawaken. That's what Alter Rebbe says in Tanya. It's not me, it's what Alter Rebbe says in Tanya. Because he could wake, awaken at any given moment. Whatever. Okay, let's go right. So the four season is necessary, and what we do in summer has to be equal to winter. We cannot have any difference. Right. That's what you were saying. Yes, the Rebbe says in, in the Sikhs, printed earlier, look at the Sikhs, that people used to go to the country, and the country, you know, was loose, you know, looser a little bit. Yeah, in the summer in the country. So the Rebbe used the expression, people used to say like this, Echta v'ashuv. I'll sin in the country, v'ashuv, then I'll come back to the city. You know, the Gemara says, I'll sin, then later I'll do tshuva. You know, Echta in the country, then v'ashuv. <laughs> I'll come back to the city. If you think about it, the true test uh, of real Yiddishkeit is consistency. B'chlal in life, in parenting, in every, it's consistency. If you're not consistent, then it's not amis. One of the fundamental things in Chinuch is for parents to be consistent. Not only in Yiddishkeit, but to be consistent. That's because that's amis. That works. There's the, the Chidah says, Shechonar begins, the big Shechonar begins, Shavit Sashem Lenagdi Summit. Arachayim ends, the end of, the last dinner in Arachayim is, is put in cotton. And over there it ends, Tev Lev Mishta Tamit. Tev Lev, a good heart, is always, simply means always partying, but always besimcha, yeah? So the Chidah writes, that this is a shnayim layem eila summit. These are the two carbon tamidim. The tamid of Shabisa Hashem Lenegdi summit and the tamid of Tevlev Mishta Tamid, the level of Simcha. Those are the shnayim layem, shnei tamidim. What? Shukhnar begins with Shvitz Hashem and Nagi Summit. It ends with Tevlev Mishta Tamid. So those are the two carbon to meet them. Okay, Vaitar. Um, okay, one second. Yeah, we didn't learn too much today. Let's go. Very dish. Okay. So one, Zapel Ben Hashem Aguva Belkos. Okay, so we got off topic. But bottom line is the first level of Amuna comes from the fact that the Nishama sees Elokos. It's very Elokos. And because of that, it influences the neshama that's in the body. The mazlai chazi. The second explanation is the sheir shamuna comes from etzem and neshama, which is lemaylem mazlai chazi, which is higher than the level of mazlai chazi, which is the zalsha etzem and neshama. Mukusher is belukus. This is the essence of the neshama. Is Bound and connected to Lokus is this kashvis atzmis, an essential bond, not she'ena tului besiba. It's not causing the first level that ever said what causes the amuna because the neshama sees Lokus. It's a because. Because the neshama sees Lokus, he says, this is not she'ena tuli, it's not, be, not even the level of re'iya shalomayla me'asechu. So there's two reasons why a yid has a munah. One is because, a reason, because the neshama sees a lukus outside of the body and then it influences the level of the neshama in the body. And the second reason is, it's not because. The neshama is a lukus. It's not a causing. It is, that's what it is. It's a lukus. One is higher, one is yet Yeah. Essence, real, real essence, essence. Real. Essence. The neshama is a Hashem. The neshama is a lukus. And he says, V'yashlaymed me'achlukem ben shnei biyurem me'nyanimu. 
what's the difference between these two levels of Amunah? So like this. Amunah by Neshama lo banishes the guf. The level of the Neshama that's in the body. From the level of Neshama shilamayla b'chines makiv, it's an external level. Kivin shilamayla, and Neshama lamayla mayla mislapshes, because the Neshama is not affected by the body. Therefore, pulosa by Neshama amala b'chines the guf is a level of makiv. In other words, because the neshama above, in the makif level, sees a locus, so therefore that causes the neshama in the body to feel a locus. But that's coming from a makif source. It's coming from an external source. But b'chadei shamona ba neshama levesh the guf should be primius. If that's something causing it, if something is causing you to do something, it's not you. In other words, like we were talking before, if the environment is what's causing you to be religious, you know, then it's, you're not, it's not you. You're not religious. The environment is making you religious. It's not you.